Hello and welcome to Leeds University Library Gallery's video on how to make a simple concertina book. Here's a list of things that you'll need, so feel free to hit the pause button to make sure you've got everything that you want and I'll see you in a minute. You'll need two strips of paper. I just divided an A3 sheet into half. Taking one sheet, fold it in half long ways. making sure you get a nice sharp um, crease. You can use uh, fingernails or I'm using a bone folder here. Then take one end of the paper and fold it back on itself up to that middle fold that you made earlier. Again making sure you get a really nice sharp fold. Turn it over and then repeat on the other side so that you have folded your paper into four quarters. You'll see that I um, take my time here to, um, to get it really, really accurate. That will only benefit you um, as you go along. So taking the time to make sure you're all lined up properly will make a better book. And here we are, that you've made your first um, few pages of your concertina book. As you'll see, it kind of looks a bit like an M or a W, depending on which way you look at it. Take your next sheet of paper and then just repeat the steps that you've just done. So folding it in half and then into quarters. Making sure you get those nice crisp folds. You should now have two concertina folded pieces of paper. You can do as many as you like, but for today we're going to use two. Place your papers end to end so that the folds next to the end are forming valleys rather than peaks. Line them up as carefully as you can. You'll need some kind of weight to hold them down. The best thing that I found to use at home was actually my mobile phone, but be careful not to get glue on it. For this next step, you will need a thin strip of paper and some glue, or you can use tape. Archival grade tape would be best, but any kind of paper-based tape would work fine. I'm using paper and glue today. Make sure that your paper or tape strip matches the height of your book exactly. If you're using a paper strip to attach your two pieces of paper together, then you'll need to spread a thin layer of glue over the entire strip. It doesn't need to be thick, but you will need an even covering all over. Carefully stick your paper strip or tape to the seam. Do the top half and then move your weight out of the way and then follow through on the second and give it a good rub to make sure that it's firmly stuck down. Fold the seam to create a peak. And there you have your pages of your concertina book. You may choose to finish there, but I will go on to show you now how to make a cover for your book. You will need enough grey card to cover both ends of your book. Use the pages of your book as a guide to mark out on your grey card a piece that will be a few millimetres larger than the pages. Thank you. 
It is worth being as accurate as you can here, as a well-made cover will protect your book properly, but also it is the first thing that you'll see. I'm using scissors to cut out the grey card, but if you've got a craft knife and a safety rule, they're always better to use. Once you've done one cover, please repeat as you will need two for the front and the back. You will now need your nice paper and one sheet of your grey card. Use your grey card to measure out a piece of the nice paper it's about two centimetres all the way around, larger than your grey card. It will also be helpful later if you draw around your grey card on your piece of paper. it out and repeat because again you will need two of these. In order to have nice tidy corners to your covers you need to mark out the depth of the grey card on those corners. So placing the grey card diagonally across each corner that you drew out onto your paper you will see that um, you need a little gap which will be the depth of the grey card between the corner and the line that you drew. This will ensure that your, your corners will be really neat. So do the same on each of the four corners of your cover. And with your scissors, just, just snip off along that line. It's worth noting here that the angle that you're cutting the corners off at needs to be roughly 45 degrees. It doesn't have to be completely accurate. Um, as long as it's around 45 degrees, that should work fine. Now we're going to stick the grey card to your nice cover paper. So using a bit of glue again, glue, glue and uh, water mix I'm using here, um, just sort of spread it out over one side of the grey card. It's really important to make sure that there's no kind of great big lumpy bits. Um, also important here is to be clean and tidy. So I'm using scrap paper each time I, I glue an area and then taking it away and using another part of clean paper each time so you're really not going to be getting anything anything dirty. Taking my glue piece of grey card I'm going to line it up onto my cover paper very carefully so making sure that I've got those little gaps between the edge of the corners and where the grey card corner is for those nice neat corners and really pressing it down well. Using a fresh side of scrap paper, I'm going to glue um, along the, the edge strips now and really, really tucking the glue into the, into the edge of the grey board um, as well as covering the whole area of the, the tab, I guess you could call it, um, to make sure there's really good covering. Again, not, not lots of lumps of glue, you want to make sure it's an even spread and not too thick, you don't need it too thick, just long, it's a good cover and it's an even spread. Then I'm going to take my grey card and my paper and with the sticky bit facing away from me, I'm dragging and then pushing it over and then dragging it some more and then pressing it down. That makes sure you get a really nice tight um, covering over the grey card. And then smoothing out any bubbles that might have occurred when I stuck the grey card on before. And then I'm going to repeat on the opposite side. So I'm doing both long sides first and then I'll go on to doing the short sides. So again, just getting a nice smooth covering and making sure that the glue goes right on the edge of the grey card. Before we go on to stick the short sides, it's time to pay a bit of attention to those corners. So again, getting a new clean sheet of scrap. I'm going to tuck some glue right into those corners on both sides. 
and then using my nail I'm just going to stick the corner in, sort of tuck it in and crease it, crease it down so it's covering, covering the corner of the grey card really well. Then I can go on to stick the, the tab down as I did before with the long sides. And of course I'll repeat this on the other side so we get all, all four sides all glued down. And there we have it. The first side of cover is done and obviously we've got to do the other one as well. Now it's time to stick our cover to our pages. So taking the last page of your book and again with some clean scrap paper I'm putting some scrap paper underneath the page but also just using another piece to act as a guard against painting the, the glue over onto the pages that we don't want it to be on. So once again a nice even fairly thin covering of glue. And taking the cover I'm going to line up the pages of the book carefully so that it's evenly, oh, it's bang in the middle really, and you've got the even edging all the way around. And then give it a nice good rub again, applying firm, firm and even pressure all over the book. I'm going to open it up and make sure it's not stuck to the other pages as well as smoothing it out. And there we go, it's beginning to look quite smart. So now we move on to do the last cover. So once you've got the back page glued, again using the scrap paper to keep your area clean, you can then stick it onto the cover. So once again working super hard to make sure that it's evenly in the middle and lining up the spine is really important on this one. So closing the book and making sure the top and bottom covers are, are, are equal all the way around and nicely lined up. Again, this just sort of makes for a nice and neat book. Applying some pressure on both sides. And there you have it. You've made your first concertina book. While it's drying, leave it under something heavy like a book. This will stop the, the covers warping. The wonderful thing about uh, concertina books is that they are so versatile. We have an artist in our collections called Stephen Chaplin who has made hundreds and uses those as sketchbooks. Ian Tyson cut into the pages of Tenebrae, his concertina book, and made it more sculptural, architectural. What will you do with yours? Go and have some fun and don't forget to share them with us on our social media channels. We love to see what you've been up to. Thanks very much and I hope you enjoyed this session.